Praise the Lord. Alam, baka natin si Jesus. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. We praise and thank the Lord for His goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, we are going to tackle something. We are, we are going to talk about something that rages within. Hallelujah. That's why I have entitled this message this morning, The Battle Within. Hallelujah. The Battle Within. It will be taken from James chapter 4, verse 1 to 10. But before we are going to read the Word of God, can you just bow down your head and let us pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we are here, right here in this place right now. And we thank you, O God, for what you are going to do in our midst, Lord. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, change our minds, change our hearts as well. That we may be ready, Lord, to receive your blessing. The blessing that you have intended for each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you that you are honing our characters. You are honing our behaviors, our mindsets, our declarations, oh God. You are honing it in accordance to your word. In accordance to your will. In accordance to your purposes in our lives. In accordance, Lord, to how you have designed and destined each and every one of us. Today, I pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit, O oh God, will overwhelm each and every one of us. And will guide us and lead us, Lord, into the path of righteousness just for your name's sake, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that each and every one will give glory and honor unto you, Lord. In whatever that we do, whether we eat or drink, Lord, let everything be done according to your glory and praises and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The battle within. Don't you know that there are things in our lives, hallelujah, that which sometimes we cannot understand. There are things in our lives, circumstance, that we do not understand why did it happen. But you see, people of God, they said that if you have to conquer something in your life, the first thing that you have to conquer first is yourself. Amen. Because deep within you, there is something that is battling, something that is waging war. Hallelujah. When you become born again, you do not belong anymore. To the world. When you become born again, your mind, your heart, your life does not belong anymore to Satan, does not belong anymore to the world, but it belongs to God. But you see, people of God, you see that we are still in the flesh. And while we are being here in the flesh, the devil will just will not just give up on his temptation, on, on his trying to calling you back. To being worldly, people of God, the devil is real. But he's always positioning himself into a point where you are weak. And when you put down your guard, the devil will always come to you. Present to you something, something that is, you know, with, with a topping, something glamorous. Something enticing, people of God, I tell you, sin is being garnished, palatable to the soul. Hallelujah. And if we are not aware, and if we are not putting our guards every day, if we are not aware of it, people of God, we always fall short of the glory of God because we will always fall into sin. But praise be to God who is full of love and compassion and His grace is always available to each and every one. Hallelujah. Amen. Say amen. 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 Hallelujah. His grace is always available to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. God's measurement of grace and mercy is not lacking. It's always there. It's always overflowing. The, old, the only sad thing many times is that God, His grace 
is being, you know, being, uh, uh, what to call this, the, the, we try to overdo it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We abuse it. Hallelujah. Let's proceed to our text this morning. Hallelujah. James chapter 4 verses 1 to 10, it says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get to what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You know, the first one, the first one there is, you know, a struggle from within. And then the second Par, uh, I mean, and second sentence is the quarrel within each other. Hallelujah. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. <coughs> when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people. This is painful. Hallelujah. Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us, but he gives us more grace? Say amen. Hallelujah. That is why scripture says God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Hallelujah. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil in the, and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, people of God, there are fights and quarrels. Fights and quarrels come from frustrations. You know, when you see someone has these things, when someone, you see someone acquires many things, and deep within you, I want to have that too. Hallelujah. I want to have what he has. Hallelujah. Sometimes including flings. My compari has many flings. I can do that. And it becomes a competition. You know, Satan, you know, Satan is presenting many times sins as making it as a competition. Hallelujah. If you have so many flings, then you have you are macho. The devil is appealing especially to men to the personal appearance and even to women. Hallelujah. But you see people of God, no matter how thick your foundation is, if you don't have Jesus, the glory of God will not come out. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's better that women, you also build your relationship with God. You have to deepen your intimacy with the Lord. This church is not only preaching about prosperity, people of God. But I'm going to tell you, people of God, we will not stop preaching prosperity coupled with the change of character. Hallelujah. Because prosperity comes for as long as the receiver is changed. You cannot have an old wineskin with the new, with the new wine that God is about to pour upon you, people of God. Hallelujah. And so it's very important that our character matches with the box. Matches with the receiver. Hallelujah. Because if that anointing, if that blessing, new things that will come, new opportunities will come in your life, people of God. If this character, the foundation of the blessings of God, it will destroy you. And God, when He gives blessings... He did not intend for us to be destroyed by such blessings. Hallelujah. And if that blessing pulls you away from God, then that is not a blessing. That's the enticement of the enemy. Hallelujah. That is being, you know, wrapped into something like a blessing. 
But actually, the devil is enticing you so that he can pull you away from God. And there's so many things in life. Hallelujah. So many things that occupies us. And it seems that we are lacking out of time. We lack time to spend time with the Lord. We lack time to pray. We lack time to de have devotional with God. This is very important, people of God. To be with the Lord and to know and apply and obey His words is more than blessings. And if we, you are being led to believe that you can be blessed apart from God, you are wrong. Brothers and sisters, Apart from the Lord, the blessing that you enjoy today may come out from you, can be taken from you just a flick of a finger. And so do not be contented today that you are blessed today because any time, oh, with the volatility of the ark economy today, you cannot trust with your wealth. I tell you. Amen. I mean, those who are in business, those who are employers, but those who are handling the finances, they know what I'm talking about. Our economy is so volatile, it's just good that we have the promise of God. Philippines has the promise of God. It's just so good that we keep on hanging and we contend on the promises of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That the Philippines still is one of the robust economy in the Southeast Asia. But I tell you, people of God, if each and every one of us will not hold on to the Lord, anything that we enjoy can instantly vanish from us. Hallelujah. Everything is not permanent. The only thing that is permanent is that God's grace is always there. But you know, you see people of God, there is always a duration for God's grace and for God's mercy. That's why the Bible says, seek me while still I am found. It means to say that we can find the Lord while we are seeking Him. If our hearts are longing for God, we can find God. But time will come. There will be a time that this seeking and knocking and calling from God will end. Hallelujah. That's what also the, the verse suggests. We can keep on calling upon God. But you see there is a duration. You know, hallelujah. Have you asked yourself as to why sometimes, if not many times, that you are that your that our prayers are not answered. Anyone? Anyone here? That many times when he is praying, he will always receive the, the prayers and he will be answered by his prayers. Anyone here? I pray. And I sometimes don't receive what I pray. Or maybe sometimes the, the Lord would just delay it, and then the Lord will, you know, give that to me. In a span of months, years, even decades. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You also wish that there are no fights among your siblings. Oh, oh God, this is common. Hallelujah. When you, you know, even, even twins, they come from the same family background. They, have, they, they, they came from the same parents but they have different temperaments, right? So, it is, not, it is inevitable that they would fight. They would always fight, and they would have disagreement among themselves. Why is there really fights among us? Why? Why? And this is a reality, people of God. I want to show you the reality. There are there are churches who fight. There are laborers in the vineyards who fight. Hallelujah. Reality is Abraham and Lot, their men fought for a parcel of land so that 
they can send their their uh, lambs there, their their flocks there to to graze for the grasses, and so they quarrel over over the the land, and so Abraham said, if you go to the north, I'm going to the south, and if you go to the east, I'm going to the west. I'll go the opposite. Hallelujah. If you go there, hallelujah. So choose from among you where to go. Because if you go there, I'm going to the opposite. One might blame the devil, inciting, enticing everyone to fight. If we fight, what were the reasons and the cause of those fights? Hallelujah. In this passage, there are several things that we have to take note. That sometimes we thought are just normal. We thought all the while it's just normal, but actually are offensive to God. They are as follows. Let me lead you. The first one there is being covetous. Covetousness. What is that? Covetousness is this. Look at the picture there. You need only one, but you want many. Want versus need. Covetousness is you need only one. You need only one, but you want many. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was asking God, Lord, how do I present this to them? In a nutshell, just a nutshell, one-liner. Lord, I want to show to them one-liner. So covetousness is being, you know, you need one, only one. You only need one cell phone. You don't need many cell phones. Amen? Amen? You personally, you need only one car. Amen? And you don't need any fancy car. Here in Iloilo, I, I, I don't think you, you would enjoy Lamborghini here. Hallelujah. But you see, but you see, people of God, if God gave you such a, an expensive car, wow, it's a one, wonderful thing. But you see, you need only one in order for you to be transported from one place to another. Amen? Praise God for many cars. Hallelujah. Praise God for many cell phones. But you see, people of God, you only need one. But many times our hearts need more. We only need one wife or one husband, but some need more. <laughs> That's covetousness. Amen. Covetousness. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke 12, 15, it says, and he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Hallelujah. Material things does not define us. God will not look at you and He will say to you, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, because of the many things you have acquired. God will not look at you something like that. In fact, when the Lord says, Well done, He expects you that you have done something for Him. Amen. He is not measuring your ability to acquire things, your ability to have acquired many things in your life. He is measuring how faithful you are to the Lord. Amen. And this is the measure of God. I have mentioned this uh, yesterday to the ACT students. You know, when you're looking for somebody, in order for you to train them to be leaders in the church, you have to choose those who are faithful. Do I mean that those who are faithful are faithful in attending the church, in the Bible study, in the, in the gatherings and many things? What I mean of faith is this. Those people who are full of faith. Hallelujah. Full of faith. Hallelujah. Ano ganito ang, ang, ang faith? Oh, I'm full of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, they should be available. They should be involved. They should be teachable. They should be hungry. Hallelujah. For God. That's a mark of a leader. 
Hallelujah. They should be faithful in the church. Hallelujah. And so people of God, he said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist in abundance of the things he possess. You see, our ability to acquire what we want from God is being hampered by our covetousness. Hello? Because many times, listen to this people of God, the Lord does not listen to the words you say. The Lord, first of all, listens to your heart. Amen. And so if this heart is full of coveting, hallelujah, you only need one, but you want many, the Lord does not like that one. The Lord does not want you to hoard many things in your life. Just be contented of what it is. This is where Stephen Curry failed. He thought all the while that he can do all things and he would win and sweep the championship. But just, he, he wrote the, the verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He wrote that on the signature uh, uh, sneakers that he has. So I can do all things through Christ. He, he thought all the while that, you know, I can do all things. I have that freedom. I have that ability. It's not about you. It's about God. Paul was saying, I can live as poor man. I can live as rich man. Remember, Paul has been shepherded. He received many lashes several times. Seven times that he was lashed 40 times. He was shipwrecked many times. He can live as a poor man and is contented. He can live as a rich man because he was a lawyer. He was the teacher, a teacher of the law. People of God. That's what Paul was saying. I can live and be contented of what I have. And still living and breathing. For as long as I am breathing, hallelujah, I am still living. And I can live contented with what God is giving unto me. Let me lead you to another one that is being, being uh, uh, led us here in this, in this uh, verse. False humility. What is false humility? False humility is pridefulness in disguise. You know, sometimes when you are being... You know, somebody would say to you, oh, you're beautiful. You know, Filipinos are like that. Right? Right? This is false humility. False humility. Since we don't want to be branded as covetous, you would not ask God for it. It occurs when you do not submit to God's will. And thankfully, you become thankful and fearlessly accept that He has done what He has done for us. This is pride. Preferring the way we see ourselves and ultimately lead us away from God. What do I mean by this? Sometimes we would say, Oh Lord, this is what you have given to me. I humbly accept it. Lord, one time I was just, you know, I, I was outside at Agaisano, lining up for ATM, land bank. And I heard the, a, a man and a woman talking. I heard the woman saying, well, this is what the Lord has given me. I'm going to accept it. You know, this is many times false humility. And there are things that you have, you are not supposed to receive. But since you are saying to yourself, well, I'm going to accept it. People of God, this is false humility. When you say that, you know, uh, well, I'm going to accept it. I humbly accept it. You see, people of God, if we just pray, if we have just prayed, the Lord would have made something different if we just pray. But since you say, 
Well, this is your will, Lord. I humbly accept it. Sometimes it's just a matter of prayer. It's just a matter of presenting something to the Lord. And the Lord would have changed everything. We do not ask because we do not receive before because we fail to ask from the Lord. Oh Lord, balaan mo naman na. Lord, you know what is in my heart. You see, God is a fellowshipping God. And He wants to talk to you. And He wants to listen to us, people of God. And so you, God wants us to verbalize what you really need. Yes, God is an all-knowing God. But God wants you to talk and pray and present something to Him. We don't receive it because we don't pray. Lord, balaan mo naman na. Why not just say, Lord, kinanglan ko na gid, balay. Lord, I need to repair my house. Lord, I need to have a husband. Don't ever pray, Lord, balaan mo na na. That's false humility. Hello? Am I talking to somebody? Hallelujah. False humility. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, always, I always give this uh, 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 illustration to you. You know, one time, uh, a boy was given a uh, medal for being the most humble. So, his medal was named Most Humble. And after the ceremony and the celebration, every time he went, up to, went out of his house, he wear the medal, most humble. You see, I'm most humble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm most humble. That's false humility, people of God. Hallelujah. 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 Ginoo, batunon ta na lang ni. We thought all the while that we are humbling ourselves before the Lord. But actually, the things that happen in our lives are consequences of our poor choice, wrong choices, or we do not choose at all. Hello? Can I say that again? We do not receive. When we say, Lord, I'm going to receive it because I know it comes from you. But actually, it's not. Hallelujah. We, we think that that is the most humble thing that we are going to do by saying that to before the Lord. So we don't receive anything. But actually, the things that happen in our lives are consequences of poor choice. Hallelujah. Wrong choice. Or because we do not choose at all. Hallelujah. We don't pray to the Lord. We presume and assume that God knows our heart. Yes, but the Lord is always referring to your faith. And so when you begin to say something to the Lord in prayer, you are declaring faith. You are assuming a position of being trusting to God, relying on God, what He is about to do. Hallelujah. Seeing the end while still here in the beginning. That's faith. Hallelujah. You want to receive something from God, but you don't pray. And you say, Nahibaluan mo naman, Lord. We practice false humility when we intentionally devalue ourselves or our contribution in an attempt to appear humble, as if humble. There are people who would say, ah, imol gikuya, and they are proud of being poor. This is a poor mentality. Di ba lahat? Filipinos, we are being trained to think that it is a humble thing to declare that we are poor, that well, in fact, we are, you know, we are amassing wealth. And they would say, well, Imol lang ya kami. I have heard that even to priests, 
in some other pastors, in some other friends that I have, they would say, naghalin gidya kami sa imol and underline ang tinaga nga gid. Imol gidya kami. And they are proud of that. You see, people of God, this is not humility. This is pride in these guys. Hallelujah. So pridefulness in these guys is full, false humility. Second one is adultery. And I'm going to end here. Adultery. It's mentioned there in our text. Adultery. Can you see that one? <laughs> adultery. Hallelujah. Adultery is cheating on one's spouse. That's basically cheating on one's spouse. You are having sexual relationship with somebody who is not either your husband or wife. That's adultery. Hallelujah. But you see people of God in these verses, in the, in the verse, in the text, hallelujah, we, God is not showing us that we are having sexual relationship with one, with somebody. God is just telling us that when we become friends of the world, that's adultery to Him. Hallelujah. Adultery. Having sexual relation with someone other than your spouse. In the Old Testament, the punishment here is stoning to death. <coughs> stoning to death. But Jesus debunked it and, and tried to destroy this kind of, of uh, ways to punish people. And when somebody presented a, 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 a woman, a prostitute, and, he, and she was accused of having adultery, and they were about to stone them to death. They presented to Jesus. And Jesus said, while writing on the soil, he was writing something on the soil. He said, let anyone cast the first stone. Those of you who do not sin. And slowly, Jesus saw that one by one, everyone there that who, are trying to, who is trying to stone the woman, they went away. And when Jesus stood up, nobody was there except the woman. It simply shows people of God that in the sight of God, in the sight of God, hallelujah, we cannot just cast the stone to somebody. We cannot just arbitrarily pick up a stone and just, you know, hurl something to somebody. Hallelujah. But to God in this passage, as I've said, it refers to adultery as friendship with the world. What are in the world that are adulterous to God? Hallelujah. The lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. Let us have that 1 John 2, 15 to 16. It's that it says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes from the Father. Comes not from the Father, but from the world. This is also still basic covetousness. Hallelujah. The lust of the flesh, these are impure desires of our sinful human nature. You satisfy this lust of the flesh if you partake on bad practices that you feel satisfied in one way or another like vengeance, drug abuse, alcohol, vices, masturbation, fornication, mockery, idolatry, name it, people of God. But you see, this thing's lust of the flesh is just a one-time satisfaction. It cannot continue. But our satisfaction in the Spirit of God is continuous. The key word here is continuity. With the world offering us of a temporary satisfaction, it does not satisfy actually. You have this, ang ginahambal nila na balang unlit text. At unlit text, for quite some time only. 
only takes for seven days. It is still limited. It is not unlimited. Only takes for 15 days. Only call for 15 days. Only call for three days. It's still limited. Although there is a word unlimited, but for quite some time, just for three days, and after that, you cannot call anymore. You cannot text anymore. You cannot send SMS anymore. But you see the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, the Bible says how wide, how long, how high is the love of God to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. For us mathematicians, hallelujah, how high, how tall would that be, how wide would that be, hallelujah, how long would that be, that actually the height, the width, and the length that is actually a volume. And I was telling you, people of God, God's love is voluminous. It is not one direction. It is multi-directional. God's love is three-dimensional. It encompasses everything, people of God. What does it mean when you have the, you know, when you are watching before cartoons, it's so flat. You know, when you're watching sang una, mga, mga uh, Popeye, the sailor man, <laughs> all those things, uh, 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 Tom and Jerry, all those are flats. But the cartoons right now are 3Ds, three dimensional. Even the echogram is just two dimensional. Two dimensional. I heard this many times to my co-teachers. I have to do. I have to undergo two da echo. <laughs> two da echo. It's actually two D echo. Two dimensional echogram. <laughs> two D. Two D. Two dimensional. Hallelujah. Hindi na to the echo. It's to the echo. Two-dimensional echogram. But the love of God is three-dimensional. It's mentioned there. Hallelujah. How, how deep, how wide, how long is the love of God that He has given for each and every one of us. The last of the eye is to desire what you see. You have to desire what you see. Last of the eyes leads to the sin of covetousness. When David desired for Bathsheba, Hallelujah. When Achan took the forbidden items from the spoils of Jericho. Hallelujah. The reason they were defeated in Ai. Hallelujah. They, can you remember the story? When they went to, to Canaan and then they, they invaded Canaan through Jericho. Jericho was toppled down. The angel of the Lord was able to press down the wall. Hallelujah. And they entered and they conquered the land. After that, somebody covet the plunders. He took it and hid it under his tent, Achan. And when they attack Ai, they have something that is not for them because the plunders is for the Lord. And when that is holy to the Lord and when you take it, you bring curse to you, to yourself. And so Achan took it and hid it under his tent. And when they attack Ai, they were defeated. And Joshua said, something is wrong. Make the long story short, they stoned Achan and his family, including his cattle and flocks. They stoned them to death. Hallelujah. That's how God would purge somebody. Defeat in our lives is many times driven by lust of the eyes. If we feel like being something like we feel like being be always losing the battles of life. Please review what you did. You might have been ha having an issue in the last of the eyes. Hallelujah. Pride of life, being arrogant or boastful of one's achievement. It is also the sin of seeing others inferior on the account of your achievements. Self-righteousness. Feeling more righteous than others. In hiligay non mati naas taason, Hallelujah. Feeling more important than others, I have not placed it there. But in Philippians two, 
verse 3 to 4, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. This is the heart of God. He was willing to be despised, Jesus. He did not say, He did not say, Lord, help me. But He said, If it is your will, Father, not my will, but yours be done. This is a true humility. This is true humility. Hallelujah. Do you know why many times we cannot win life's battle? Because we have not won the battle from within. Hindi na ito madaog mga kauturan ang atong pagpakigaway si Diri sa kaliputan. Even the devil, we cannot win over the devil if first of all, we cannot win the battle within. Unahon taan ay pakigaway ang kaugalingan. How are we going to do that, people of God? How are we going to fight against our anger? How can we fight against being marites? How can we the fight, the battles within, the struggles within, hallelujah, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, we have to won the battle over them in order for us to win life's battle. Hallelujah. Hindi na lang kita magsawsaw bala sa kabuhi isang iban. Kung kita malang sa aton kabuhi, hindi tagani madaog ang ari sa aton. Amen. Amen. And let us appropriate the love and the mercies of God sa aton kabuhi. Can we do that, people of God? Gusto ta magdaog sang aton nga mga sang aton nga pagpakigaway. Hallelujah sa mga struggles ta. Gusto na ta magdaog. Sino gusto magdaog? Who wants to win that? Hallelujah. Can you stand with me right now? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your mercy and your grace in the love that surpasses all understanding. The love that many times we demand from our wife, the love that we demand from our siblings, the love that we demand, oh God, from our neighbors. And we become so frustrated, Lord, because they cannot give us the ultimate love that only you can give. Heavenly Father, can you just raise our hands? I appropriate, Lord, the love. Can you say that to the Lord? Lord, ginabaton ko ang pagigugma na ginahatag mo sa akon. Pagigugma nga hindi matag sa ako na asawa. Pagigugma nga hindi matag sa ako to padbalay. Sa ako utod, sa ako pakaisa. Bisan pa sa ako pastor ginoo. Ikaw lang ang makahatag sa akon sa pinasahi nga gugma na sang una mo na kinpakita para sa akon ginoo. Salamat sinang pagigugma. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love, Lord. To God be all the glory and a praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people will say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Praise the name of